how you doing today so welcome to my youtube channel and my video that i've made on how to replace your carpeting in your boat cabin with some nice either laminate or wood or or what i use was not a floor and i can't believe the difference that it's made so my video hopefully will walk you through some of the stuff that i had to go through give you some tips for doing it yourself um so some of the pros and cons as far as what kind of material that you want to use um, a lot of people that i've read on like club sea ray or whatnot uh, they use uh basically laminate flooring that you get from your home home center you know home depot or or, or lowe's and, and it looks fantastic um i chose not to do that because from my perspective it's not really meant for boats although i'm sure everybody's had good luck with it um, and it can get very slippery when it's wet and I don't know how many people who own boats that don't get your floor wet down in the cabin Also, I noticed that there's thermal concerns with the laminate flooring that you put in your house There's limitations as to how cold it should really be or how hot it should get So what I've done I, I did some research and I and I found something called not a floor and I'll put the uh, some information in my video that talks about it. It's a floor that, that basically puts together very similar to the laminate, but it's made uh, for everything. You can use it for home or, or whatever offices or, but specifically it's, I think it's supposed to be made for, for boats. Uh, it is very expensive compared to what you can get at Home Depot with your laminate or whatever. It's about 10 bucks a square foot, but I got a 40 foot sea ray and I only got about a hundred square foot total. So you're not, it's not like it's your house. Um, um, but it, again, it's made for boat. It's, it's made to withstand large temperature swings. So I'm in Michigan. So my boat comes out of the water and in the wintertime you can get down to zero degrees minus five or whatever and this uh this floor does not have any effect on that it can get hot in the summertime too when the the, the boat's all locked up or whatever um one of the things i like about the naughty floor is that it's got a non-slip texture to the surface so if it does get wet the water does not hurt it at all it's completely waterproof and it does not get slippery in fact as you see in my video i actually used it uh for my stairs i replaced the the old crappy dirty dingy uh, carpeting on my stairs with this naughty floor and it looks great uh, they do have multiple color selections i got the cherry interior in my sea ray in the cabin i got a 99 and the color that i picked it was a cherry and black and you'll see in the video and it matched the uh the the cherry of my cabinetry of the sea ray very very well and it's got a nice nautical look it's kind of a teak and holly look and it installs just like laminate flooring it has the uh uh, the tongue and groove so to speak where it clicks in and you do have to glue this thing down so as far as the time it's it took it's not an easy project i took all winter and spring to do it i kind of chipped away at it i did little bits and pieces i had christmas off so i was able to go out my boat i live close to the boat and i uh every day i'd go out there and do a little bit as far as the cost goes it cost me about 1200 bucks for the nauta floor the actual floor itself you probably got about 80 bucks in glue i bought plywood and i'll get into that during the video to put down over the uh after i pull the carpeting up i, I laid plywood down i don't want to use a belt sander to get everything smooth because you just can't the floor is not going to come smooth um, i love my sea ray but sea ray does not put really fiberglass smooth floors down um, you got the screws and then i got some trim pieces so all in all it was probably around 16 1700 bucks and i did it myself and i have heard uh prices quotes from other people upward around ten thousand dollars to do something like that so it's it's a good diy project and certainly um it's going to save you a lot of money if you can do it yourself one more note is I did use Plastique, P-L-A-S-T-E-A-K. I put uh, some information on the video. That's where all my trim come from. The trim that I had, as you'll see in the video, really makes a big difference. So just want to give you a little introduction as to what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you all the steps that I, I took to get the flooring in, how I made templates to make sure the, uh, the, the pieces cut and fit very good, and how I put it down and some of the tricks that I learned. So I hope you enjoy the video. Here is the cabin of my 1999 400 Sundancer. And as you can see, it has the typical Sea Ray white carpeting down inside, which is impossible to keep clean. Uh, my carpet in particular was very worn. It's over 20 years old. 
I even have the canvas carpet liner over that and that started getting lots of stains and uh, wearing out as well. So I decided to make the decisions to take the plunge and just go ahead and start cutting this carpeting out. Here's a link to a video I made on how to get the carpet out. It was very difficult, but not impossible. So roll your sleeves up, get going. It's really worth it and it'll make a big difference. So after I got all the carpeting up, what I found out there was a lot of glue left behind. So I scraped a lot of the pockets of the glue up with one of those little hand uh, blade scrapers that you can get at Home Depot. That worked pretty good. I had to use kind of a chisel with, the, uh, with a hammer on it. I also noticed that the floor was very uneven. And because it was so uneven and I did not want to belt sand all the remaining screw or all the, the remaining glue, what I decided to do, and this is based off of other people and their projects, I decided to just screw down half inch plywood into the floor. Um, I still needed to knock down some high spots of the fiberglass in the floor, but I use that with just a kind of a belt type sander, which does kind of gum up with glue pretty easily but all in all I was real happy with what I did with the plywood and it did lay down just fine so what I did uh, nicely so that it was almost a perfect fit and again I made uh, five different templates for these wood patterns and again that was just for the subfloor when I got when I went on to the actual planks themselves um, I'll, I'll get into that in the video because that's a little more critical you, you want to make those cuts perfect and they're very expensive, so you don't want to mess them up. So anyways, just to give you a little bit, an idea of, of how I made the geometry for the actual wooden planks that I put down for the subfloor. So what I'm trying to do here is just, I got this moving paper. Uh, it's for putting on floors. And I'm just basically getting a little oversized and scrunching it in. And then I found the best thing to do is to use an exacto knife to get right in there on the edges to get a nice, nice tight, accurate fit. Versus trying to mark it and then cut it with a pair of scissors. This has worked out the best for me. But follows a knife. Nice. So again, it gets a nice, uh, nice tight fit around there. Done this all along. And these each section is going to represent the uh, the boards I'm going to use. So now I'll come over here, bring those down, crease them underneath those, cut them just like I did around there. The problem I'm going to have is <laughs> I'm going to, uh, the bigger the board, the better, I think, because that alleviates some of the, un this, the, the, the bottom of this boat is horribly unlevel. I, I don't know what C-Ray was thinking, but I'm worried about uh, if I get too big of a board, <laughs> getting it in here and uh, having enough room to lay it and sneak it in kind of like a puzzle. I guess if I have to cut some of these smaller, I will, but um, this is kind of my initial attempt at it. So one of the biggest challenges that I had was cutting the holes in the floor for the hatches. Um, they had to be perfectly parallel with each other and perfectly straight. And again, I'm no finished carpenter, so it was a challenge for me. I, <clears throat> I knew that there was no way I was going to be able to cut a straight line with a, a, a jigsaw. So I used a, uh, a router. I bought a router, and I used a, a trim, trim bit, a half-inch diameter trim bit. But... Uh, um, and, and I decided to size the widths of my hatch openings, the covers, um, uh, two widths of the actual plank, the nautic, nautique floor, which came out to be about 16 inches. And I, and I think I used, uh, I, I did plan for a gap of about 16 of an inch around the whole perimeter because you, you know you want it to, to look nice you want it to be somewhat tight but it can't be too tight because it's gonna it's gonna expand um there's gonna be thermal variation in it and you won't be able to get the hatch up so you you know you, you can't have them really really tight but you don't want them a big gap because it doesn't look very well very good but uh again but the the, the width and the length of these uh holes in the plywood floor if you want it to be really, really good, it's got to be really precise. So I'll show you in a video how I use my router to do that. But basically here, um, hopefully you can see this, just to give you an idea. 
I needed a 16 inch opening. That's how that's how wide um, my my uh, the, the hatches were going to be, and I used a half inch router bit. So I made some templates, and I'll show you in a video. And I left a quarter of an inch of material here that I'm going to be removing with the router, so then it could get me precisely the width that I needed to, to have. So. Look in the video, give me an idea how I did this. So I wanted to have, I want to leave just enough that I want to route off. And it's a it's quarter inch router bit. Or it's a, yeah, half inch router bit. Uh, it, the shank is quarter, I wanted a half, but I couldn't get a top bearing one with a, a half inch shank. But the, the cutter, it's a quarter inch, or a half inch, I keep saying half. So I want to obviously half that gonna come out and it's gonna remove that material there. Uh, these are just screwed in. I did not uh, uh, comment that. The screws gotta be down far enough so that they don't hit the router base. Either that or uh, put them far back. The router base won't contact them. But they all gotta be flush for the router to go around. Again, I'll show that when we set that up on the video. Here's another way, just check and make sure that uh, it's gonna have a decent tight fit up. I figure uh, if I have problems when I get this mounted and it doesn't fit in the way it's supposed to, I'll just take these back home and uh, trim the edges of those up. So, um, I got these standing off of like two by four, so there's space underneath them. So we're gonna go 360 degrees uh, clockwise. And uh, it leaves quite a mess, which is why I did not want to do this on the boat. So my next challenge was going to be, it's time for me to start laying down the planks, but where do I start from? Because unlike a house, I don't have square walls on the very edge. So I needed to find out, or I needed to determine a nice square starting point. So I determined, as you can see, the hatches are not running down the center line of the boat, but they are running down the center, and they are very, very true. They're very straight to each other. So I took a laser, and I projected the laser on the very edges of those hatches, as you can see, and it runs all the way up to the uh, very bow of the boat there. I then took a straight edge and a Sharpie, and I marked a straight line off the edge of those laser marks all the way down the length of the boat. So now I had a straight line running down the length of the boat that was true so I could I could put my first plank right along that straight line, get that down, get that glued in, and then I could build outward toward the peripherals of the boat and that way I knew that my planks were going to be very true, very parallel to those hatches. So as you can see in the picture, I started laying planks down, and as I mentioned earlier, I decided to start on the starboard side of the hatches as my first roll of planks throughout the whole length of the boat, and I worked my way outward on the starboard side. But one of the challenges I was having is that when I started going toward the port side, I needed to make sure that the, the planks on the port side of the hatches were perfectly spaced and perfectly parallel to the ones on the, the, the starboard side because the, the length and the width and the parallelism of these hatches is critical. They cannot be cocked with each other, otherwise the hatches won't look right. There'll be large gaps around it and they won't close right. 
So what I decided to do, I did some thinking. That white piece of wood that you see in the middle of the screen, I call that a plank spacing jig. And on the bottom side of that plank, there are some wooden legs that uh, protrude downward. And the spacing of those legs are the exact width of that hatch opening. Um, and so that way I could put that down. I show one in the picture. I actually had, I think, uh, three of them throughout the whole length. I could lay them down there. And when I went to go lay those planks down on the port side of the hatch, I would tuck them tight up against that leg. And it, it created a perfect uh, jig to space those hatches out exactly as they needed. Not only was it the right width, but it made them very parallel as well. So it was very important to make sure those hatch, hatches fit very good.